The children's Bible consists of six parts. Part 1 through 4 dawn from the Old Testament, part 5 and 6 from the New Testament. The Bible is the sacred book of Christians and Jews. It tells the story of God's dealings with men, beginning with the creation of the world. The parts of the Bible are called books, such as Book of Ruth or the Book of Kings. The word Bible comes from a Greek term meaning the books. Since the Bible is really a library in itself, containing many volumes, these books were written in the course of a thousand years by many authors in many places, under the guidance and inspiration of God. Most of the Old Testament books were originally written in Hebrew. The books of the New Testament were written in Greek. Each book was meant for a special purpose. Some of them are historical, telling the story of God's chosen people, the children of Israel. Others are prophetic, speaking of things which are still to come, of the hidden things in God's plan for us. Others were written to teach wisdom or give advice. One of them, the Book of Psalms, is simply a collection of sacred hymns, once used in the temple worship. Others are almost novels and even contain love stories, such as that of Ruth, or tell of heroes who saved their people, like Moses. Every page of the Bible is alive with every sort of people, alive with their words and deeds. Some of these people are saints and heroes. Many are ordinary people. Some kind, some cruel, some weak, some strong. The Bible and history have often cast light on one another, each helping to explain or confirm what the other says. With the Bible as a guide, archaeologists have been able to find lost cities and uncover many ancient ruins, starting with the beginning of the world. The story of the Bible covers several centuries and lands, teaching generation after generation that there is a divine plan in history and a purpose in human life. For Christians, the Bible has two principal divisions, the Old Testament and the New. Neither can stand alone. The Old Testament prepares for the New. The New Testament completes the Old. Jesus and his apostles knew the sacred writings of the Old Testament almost by heart, as did many other Jews. Jesus based his teachings on them, and the writings of St. Paul and the other apostles are full of quotations from the Old Testament. Jesus, when asked for a sign, observed that just as Joah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights, so would the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And like Jonah, he would come out again. The word Christ, it should be noted, is in the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew word Messiah. In the beginning of the New Testament are found the four Gospels, which tell the story of Christ's earthly life. There are four books by four authors, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But as they contain one message, they are here combined as a single story. After the Gospels comes the Acts of the Apostles, written by St. Luke which tell about the early days of the church. Next comes various letters, the epistles, written by the apostles for the first Christians. Most of these are the work of St. Paul. Our Bible closes with a passage from the Apocalypse of St. John the Divine, the only book of the prophecy in the New Testament. The Apocalypse, which means removing the veil, deals with church struggles against evil, the final victory of Christ, and the coming of the new Jerusalem, the eternal city of God. The church has always treasured the Bible, and early Christians suffered martyrdom for it. They honored the Holy Gospel book with lights and incense as though it were Christ himself, and placed it on the throne to take place at church councils. Today, as in every age since the time of Christ, the Gospels are the fabric which the house of Christians built is fate.